Hello everyone and welcome to our Ether Revolt pre-release guide. In this video I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about the Ether Revolt pre-release. We'll talk structure, what you need to do to be prepared, and then we'll go over some archetypes and specific cards you should look for while taking part in the event. So without further ado, let's answer all your questions. If you enjoy our pre-release guide videos and want more videos like these, be sure to hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Here are some basics you need to know. The pre-release is a casual event. If you've never attended an event at your local game store, or you're afraid of not being ready to attend something this public, do not worry. The pre-release is as casual as you can get. The players who are participating are there to have fun and play with the new cards. There's no better time to visit a new store and get yourself out there than pre-release weekend. I guarantee that. Some quality of life tips. These events can last a long time, like over 4 hours. So bring a snack, some water, try to sleep a lot the night before if you can, you know, normal healthy stuff. Now with that fluff covered, let's talk specifics. The pre-release is a sealed event. You pay anywhere from $25 to $35 and you're given this little box. It's a bit confusing to open at first, at least it was for me. So just push down the little red button and you'll be good to go. Inside of the box you'll find 4 packs of Aether Revolt, 2 packs of Kaladesh, a random foil promo rare or mythic, and a 20 sided spin down die, one of my favorite parts personally. The goal of the pre-release is to make the best 40 card minimum deck you can out of the cards you open in these packs. You cannot use cards from past sealed events, you cannot use anything from outside of the game. It's all about what you open in that event. Your deck has at least 40 cards, lands included, but there is no maximum, and you can sideboard using the rest of your sealed pool. Some players change entire decks during sideboard if they opened enough. There's a lot of flexibility there, but that's the idea of sealed. It tests your skills as a deck builder and your ability to get a foil promo Herald of Anguish instead of, you know, secret salvage. Alright, let's go a little deeper. So you open all your packs and you have all your cards sitting in front of you. How do you know what to build? Your first instinct is to look at your rares, right? The bombs you have. And while this is valuable information, it can sometimes be a trap. Don't let Aetherwind Basker force you into green when the rest of your green is terrible. That one card isn't going to save a bad color. And this is a lesson it took me years to learn. Rares and Mythics are awesome, but only if you have the support to prop them up, which brings me to my next point, removal. In Sealed, you only have your pool to rely on, which means you need to be able to discern quickly which colors are your best and which are not. One of the best ways to do that? Find your removal. Removal is a premium and limited. It's valued higher than most anything else, especially at the common or uncommon level. So when you open your packs and separate your cards into colors, separate your removal spells in each color and see where you have the most removal depth. There's a good chance that the color you have the most removal in looks pretty tempting all around. And even if the color isn't that great besides your buttload of removal, that's what support colors are for. You're mostly going to be building two color decks, which is what this limited format is designed for. What I like to do is find the color I have the most removal in and a little bit of depth, and then just find the flat out best color I have, even if I have no removal in that color, then combine them. Ton of depth with a decent amount of removal. Simple concept, but many overlook it. It's a good way to focus your attention on what's in front of you. Alright, the section you've all been waiting for. Let's go over the solid commons and uncommons in each color so you can know where your strengths are. Time to take notes. Airdrop, Aeronauts, Deadeye Harpooner, Felidar Guardian, and Thopter Arrest are the solid uncommons. They are going to be the beacons you need to look for in white. Now for a solid foundation, Dawnfeather Eagle, Caught in the Brights, Audacious Infiltrator, and Countless Gears Renegade are your quality commons. The color has amazing synergy with Revolt, and this time around is much more aggressive than white usually is. So don't be afraid to pair it with black, green, or red and go to town. The color is set up for a more aggressive stint this time around, that's for sure. Moving along to blue, the uncommon quality is all over the place here, but you should look out for Windkin Raiders, Skyship Plunder, Shielded Aether Thief, and Reverse Engineer. As you can see, Improvise is a nice synergy to cultivate here with a lot of artifacts, but not wholly necessary for the success of the cards themselves. They are quite good on their own. Now if we're talking commons, there aren't really any standouts, but there are solid playables. Look for Aether Swooper, Shipwreck Moray, Hinterland Drake, and Dispersal Technician. These will provide you with some solid flexibility in the color. If we're talking black cards, you're obviously running all the removal in the world. Fatal Push, Daring Demolition, Cruel Finality, Perilous Predicament. If it's removal, you gotta play it. Remember, look at your removal first. If we're talking beyond actual removal, 
Black does have some interesting cards to work with. Vengeful Rebel is a powerful revolt removal creature. Ether Poisoner is solid. Resourceful Return if you have artifacts, very good. And Gifted Aetherborn is just the nuts. You get this card and you can play Black, you run this. Once again, Black is very strong in removal and pretty alright elsewhere. But if you're playing Black, hope you have a lot of removal. Red brings some serious flexibility and power this time around. Enraged Giant is an auto-include, Hungry Flames is removal, Reckless Racer, even without vehicles, can rummage, so you want to be able to run that, and if you do have vehicles, Siege Modification becomes a high-priority card. Of course, if you get Scrab or Champion, pretend that's a Mythic Rare for all intents and purposes. Bomb card. For commons, we're looking at more of what Red likes to do. Not really a ton of surprises here. Shock is removal. Frontline Rebel, while aggressive, is a powerful card that gets better with vehicles to crew. Ether Chaser is well worth playing, and of course, Chandra's Revolution. Like Black, if you're running red, you really need to hope you have a non-zero amount of removal. Black and red are the two most removal-heavy colors by far this time around, so pay attention to that. Green and commons are insane. Monstrous Onslaught is hugely important, playable in everything. Malfist Revolutionary works even without counters. Pima Ether Seer is an auto-include, and it gets better the more energy producers you have. Ridge Scale Tusker is rare level worthy of any green deck. With the exception of Life Crafter's Gift only being good in some decks, you should be happy to open any green on common. They're all strong. When we move to the common level, Ether Herder, Ether Stream Leopard, Prey Upon, and Scrounging Bandar are quite good. If you're playing Revolt, Unbridled Growth, Silk Weaver Elite, and Lifecraft Cavalry get a huge bump in value. Green is one of the better Revolt colors, so if you have the support, you should play these cards. Now, everyone gets excited when they open their pre-release kits, and they get pumped when they see their foil promo card. Well, not everyone. There are some promos you're going to get that you absolutely should not play. Or at least definitely shouldn't play unless the stars align and you have a perfect deck. So in this section, real quick, I'm going to tell you the promos that you probably won't want to be playing. Let's do this quickly. Srom Senior Edificer is only good if you have auras, equipment, or vehicles. If you don't, he is a 2-mana 2-2. If you need a bear, he's just fine. But when you go to make cuts to your deck to get it to 40 cards, if Srom is there and you have no enablers for him, remove him. Brawl, powerful card, not unlimited unless you're running a deck with at least close to 10 instants or sorceries. And even then, I'm not sure it's good enough there. This isn't meant for limited play, pretty foil I'm sure, but it likely won't carry its weight. War of Invention, while being a powerful tutor and improvised spell, is only useful if you have something amazing to grab with it. So make sure you only play War if your artifact is big enough to warrant such an investment. Secret Salvage, this is terrible and limited, it's just awful, it's the worst thing ever, don't play it. Indomitable Creativity, <laughs> I'm just messing with you, this card's hilariously powerful. I got you for a second though, right? Pia's Revolution, on the other hand, you better have a bunch of artifacts or this three-mana investment that does nothing when it hits the battlefield is going to be bad. Only play this if you have the depth in your robot slots. Aid from the Cowl is tricky. If you can trigger Revolt easily, then I guess you can play this. Otherwise, it's a bit of a wild card. I reserve judgment on this until I play with it more, but be wary. A card like this is temperamental at best. Dark Intimations is an awesome card and clearly designed to help tell a story for the future. But three colors in this limited format is a nightmare. Unless you have one of the mana fixing rocks, I would not splash a third color. You need some kind of fixing. Do not let this card trap you. Oath of Ajani is fine, but no reason to go into the white-green color combination for it. Merchant's Dock Hand, I don't like this card very much. Unless you're running pretty much all artifacts, this card won't justify itself very easily. Now we're going to go in a lot more depth about specific card value in our draft guide coming early next week, but until then, I think this is the best we can do to generally prepare you for the pre-release. Just remember, find your removal, find your depth in color, 23 non-lands, 17 lands. I urge you to use the list of cards I gave you above to figure out where your strengths are. Write them down if it helps. I do hope this guide was useful to you, and I hope you have a wonderful time at pre-release this weekend. Just remember, everyone is there to have fun, so have fun! As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Ether Revolt is now really just a week away. You can pre-order boxes on TCG Player right now for $91 each. If your local game store is charging too much, or you don't have a local game store, TCG Player has your back. 
right now, real quick, super easy. Click the link, helps the channel win, win, enjoy.